this is not tap water. It's not bottled water. It's pure filtered rainwater. And by the end of this video, you're going to learn why you need to start harvesting it in a simple way you can start. Mm. So good. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Rebecca and this is my partner. Hello. We're a small family here in Accra and we're trying to live more sustainably with the resources we have in our own little corner of the world. And today we're going to be talking about something critical to sustainability, which is water. Rainwater harvesting. This house has been harvesting rainwater for over 40 years and has not been connected to any city source of water. I think that's very incredible. But it's interesting, the concept of rainwater harvesting, it's not a new concept at all, right? Mm -hmm. You could find houses in Ghana in the past that harvested rainwater, but now it's very strange to people to harvest rainwater, but there are places and homes that still harvest rainwater. And I grew up in Nigeria and my first introduction to rainwater harvesting was my mom. When I was little, she would just put a basin outside, collect the water, let the sediments drop, and she just loved drinking it. But most people had wells, so that was their, their main source of water. My second introduction to rainwater harvesting was when I met you, and I discovered that you guys harvest rainwater for all your water needs. And I just thought that that was just so cool. Some people find it weird, but I mean, it's, it's very, very normal. So we're going to show you our setup. Tom is going to give us a little tour, and by the end of the tour, you see how simple it can be to harvest rainwater. All right. Let's go. All right, so come with me. The very first thing I'm going to show you is the heart of our system, which is this massive 8,000 gallon tank. So this tank is actually, it used to be a fish pond back in the 70s. And somewhere in the 80s, we had a military government in Ghana and we got cut off from city supply. So my dad puts a roof on and we decided to start directing water from our roof into this. It's gone through a few iterations. It's due for an upgrade again, uh, but this is basically how we get all the water that we need in the house. We've got rain gutters that direct water from the roof and then the top of the tank also is a roof and it directs and slopes down this way and brings all the water this way. If you come closer, I'll show you. We have a very simple sediment filter it's as simple as a mosquito net and to give it some structure we have some chicken wire and you can see that there's some gunk in it already so what we do is we'll take this out wash it clean it and then put it back in the next point in our water system is our overhead tank we have a 600 gallon tank and gravity feeds water to the main house and we use this for everything kitchen washing bathing the whole works the main storage tank down here has a pipe that runs down to an electric pump underneath, then up into this gravity tank. For cooking, we treat the water further and we filter the water with a 0.5 micron yarn filter. And this removes extra stuff that might be in there. And to drink it, we can boil the water. So you can see it's basically stages of filtration. And this might look different for different people. This is the last um, tank we have in the house, and this is a 2,000 gallon poly tank. This is just extra storage. So this gives us a total of 10,000 gallons of water on our property. And this is how we manage for the entire year in Ghana. So you might be wondering, why should I even bother harvesting rainwater? What's it to me? I think there's so many benefits to harvesting rainwater and Tom. The first one is it saves you money. It doesn't look like they save a lot of money though, but because you have to make some investments, you have to actually have storage tanks, um, you have to treat your water, purify your water. But when you make the investments, mm -hmm. it actually your recurring costs or your ongoing costs are really low. Like we pay very little for water. I think the only ongoing cost we have is changing our filters um, twice a year. And that costs how much? It's in Ghana cities is something like 30 cities. There are more expensive filters, but even with the more expensive filters, it's still far cheaper than if you actually had to pay for water constantly. The other thing is it's easier to get started than some other forms of water. So people who are trying to go off-grade or to supply their own water, and a very popular one these days is borehole water. Yeah. 
But with borehole water, you can't start small. You have to immediately jump in and the big. entire yeah. system, get, get you know, the machines to come in and come and dig all the way down and put in all the infrastructure that you need. But with rainwater, you can actually start small. You can have much smaller storage um, and learn how to use the system and then scale up with your needs. Well, the other thing is that rainwater is far easier to treat compared to something like borehole water. Boho water can have quite high levels of minerals and salts in them and you have to use like really expensive systems and so many different types of filters to actually get the water to a really good stage. But rainwater is rather soft to begin with so you just need very simple basic filters and you are literally good to go. And another thing is reliability. If you look at how many people complain, just even online, not even on ground, how many people complain about the inconsistency of yeah, yeah. I mean, in, a, Ghana, yeah, in, in Accra, like water is a huge yeah. problem. Some now. people can go days without getting water and they have to now go buy water from another source. So it's, it's reliable knowing that you can yeah. wake up and you know that your taps are going to be flowing. You know that you have water. Um, I think it, it also forces you to be very frugal because you know that you're the one source yeah, of your you water and your, you need to manage. Water. So it makes you a more frugal and sustainable person. They say water is life. Mm -hmm. You can't live without water. But we outsource the water that we drink to other people. And usually they might do a good job, but not all the time. Not like all the time. here in Ghana, for example, consistently we've had really bad water quality. So you open the taps after the taps have been off for days, weeks, and what you get is brown water. You know, that that's clearly obvious that the water is not fit for consumption you don't need an expert to tell you this water isn't good and this is what a lot of people are facing these days where we live water is becoming a more scarce commodity all over the world so if you live somewhere blessed with rainfall and you can catch water i think it makes a lot of sense to catch that water and when you catch it you control exactly how you filter the water if you're going to add chemicals to the water you know exactly what you're adding because mm -hmm. you know there are studies that show that there are problems with things like fluoride. So if you're not comfortable with fluoride in your water or chlorine in your water, you could rather use simple filters, yarn filters, ceramic filters, and you could boil the water instead of using chemicals as all the municipal and city water sources usually do. Usually that's the... Yeah, and, and this reminds me of when one time we told one of our people that, you know, we drink our rainwater and the person was like, like almost like, ew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So people think that drinking rainwater is ill, but then are more comfortable with like water from a bottled water company, but they are also purifying their water. And like yeah. Tom says, you're not exactly sure how they do it. I think, I think having there been studies to show that bottled water is not like, yeah, uh, some bottled yeah, water. yeah, yeah. There's, there are studies that show that some of the bottled water out there is just basically repackaged city water. So if you are not so happy with your city water and you're buying bottled water, you might actually be getting the same thing. Mm. The city water comes from other sources too, like rivers and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been near a river before, but anything can get into that water, mm. right? It's not like it's the cleanest thing unless you are in some really pristine, untouched area of the world. You're not. Yeah, <laughs> then that river water is most likely going to be polluted, which is why it's treated. So every source of water yeah. isn't pure to begin exactly. with you have to do something to it. The only difference when you catch your own rainwater is that you do the steps of purification or you take that into your own hands. And rainwater is relatively clean to start with. So now that you've seen our system and we've shown you the benefits of harvesting your own rainwater, you might be wondering, how do I start? There is a simple way you can start harvesting your own rainwater and it doesn't have to be so complicated. So. Tom. Okay. To start harvesting rainwater, the first thing that you need is a way to catch the water. So for most people, that's a roof. The second thing that you need is a way to channel the water. Most people have roof gutters. And so if you've got that, you've already got the first two things that you need. And the third thing that you need is storage. Storage is where it gets a little complicated depending on your needs. It's as simple as a barrel. Something that you can get the water into and keep covered. Yeah. But a barrel is not enough to keep a family going for very long. So if you want to keep rainwater and use it for a long period of time, you need to invest in bigger storage. 
So a way to actually upgrade is you can get some IBC totes. They're these like plastic white caged things and they store quite a bit of water. And the nice thing about them is that if you if you get them with their cages, you can actually stack them. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they have good UV protection, so you might want to keep them shaded so that they can last for a long time. If you are looking for a long term solution, you might want to invest in like something like poly tanks, which can last for literally decades. I think we showed you one poly tank which we use, which is 2000 gallons of yeah. ETA. If we wanted to switch completely to poly tanks, it would need about five to get our 10,000 gallons that's, of water. I've, I've never thought about that. Yeah, that's actually cool. So you could think about it long term, like an investment like that. And once you get the water storage, you are basically set. set. Yeah. You can use us as a blueprint. Water needs are different for different people, but we actually do okay on less than 10,000 gallons of water. We have four months of dry in our country. And so our storage is enough to take us through the dry season. We use about 5,000 gallons of water during the dry season. So we actually have twice the amount of water we need because mistakes happen. People can leave taps flowing or you can have a bad rainy season. Yeah. It could take a long time or it could be a bad year. Then the last step that you need is filters. If you're not drinking any of this water, mm -hmm. You're good. You're actually fine. If you have a little garden, you can water your garden or you can wash your car. So if you want to actually use this water for yourself, you can go as simple as just a mosquito net screen and you can put this before the water goes into your container. But that only removes like the large particles, mm -hmm. right? If you want to get rid of the smaller particles, then you need to have some other types of filters. One of the filters we use is a simple yarn filter. They come in different ratings that there's five microns, one micron and 0 0.5. And that will remove really, really small particles. The last step would be making the water really fit for drinking. Either boiling, you can also solarize your water. A maximum of two liters of water, put it in a glass bottle, leave it in the sun. Leave it for six hours on a sunny day. If it's a cloudy day, you leave it for two days and you've got sterilized water. If you don't have time and you still have to make your water good for consumption, you can chemically treat it. So there are chlorine tablets you can get. And if you don't have that, you can use unscented household bleach. I think it's about 5%. And it's one or two drops of this stuff in one liter of water. And then you leave the water to air between 30 minutes to an hour. So now that you know how to harvest rainwater, you need to keep the system clean. So your rain gutters should be cleaned out regularly. For us, it's something like once a year, sometimes twice a year. I don't do it, do I? Yeah, oh, that's don't. my way. The other thing you need to do is you keep your tank clean. Yeah. If death gets in from time to time, you actually have to clean the tanks out. All sorts of little things can start to actually breathe in there because then they get food. The other thing that you we need filters. to do is you need to change you need the to filters. Your filters. Yes. So the big net, uh, mosquito nets. That, that one, big... we just have to wash it and put it back, right? Yes, to prevent dirt from getting into your storage tank. And then the yarn filters, you have to change that yeah. from time to time. So, I think you said, yeah. you said like twice a year. Yes. And there are other types of filters. So my dad uses a tabletop filter he doesn't use an under sink filter and that's basically like a container or a barrel and they have a ceramic candle you pour the water in the top the water gets filtered through the ceramic and then percolates down into another container and that's your fresh clean water oh that's really cool i think your dad has been using that candle filter yeah. thing for how many years now for, for a long time it's 40 years now mm -hmm. since we've been doing rainwater. so you've been drinking rainwater for over 40 years man no, th this house has been <laughs> drinking water for 40 years. So well, you're, you're saying you're not no. 40. <laughs> so talking about maintenance, we're going to be doing a little upgrade. Well, not a little, a big upgrade on our tank. What upgrade are we doing, Tom? We're going to change the, the tank top because it's gotten destroyed by our animals. Um, jumping on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just pictured one of our cats jumping on it. And we're going to be getting more poly tanks because we want to yeah, harvest we, we more, more rain water, water for, for gardening. Yeah, because this year was crazy. The rainy season was not like the best. As you can see, there are different ways that you can harvest and store rainwater. If you don't have a fish pond that you've turned into a rainwater harvest tank, you are good with poly tanks. If you don't have poly tanks, you can use the IBC toots. And if you don't have that, you can use barrels depending on your need. You don't have to go 
I guess, all out the way we have. You can start small, start with a barrel, start harvesting water for your drinking needs or water to wash your car or water your garden or wash your clothes. Anything to help you make you more self-sufficient. And you see that as you keep taking small steps, you slowly become more confident, you become more of an expert, and then you can go to scaling and is yes. really like an automatic. Yes. So you will want to scale up and you want to, you know, be more um, self-sufficient. So we hope you found this video very helpful. Please like it. It really helps us on our small channel. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We're very good at answering questions. Okay. So we love questions. So just leave them in the comments and maybe one of your questions will be a future video. You never know. So have a great week ahead and we'll see you in the next video.